morning, Hope City at home. We are so excited to worship with you this morning. But before we jump into the worship, we have a couple quick announcements for you. First, if this is your first time joining us, in the description of this video, you will find a link to our digital connect card. We're gonna ask that you go in and fill that out because it's a great way for us to stay connected with you. It'll also give you the opportunity to sign up for all of the next steps that you can at Hope City. We also wanna encourage you to continue to be generous with your finances during this time. And in the link of the video, you will also find a link that'll take you directly to where you can give. And finally, we wanna encourage you to follow us on all of our social media platforms to stay updated with all things Hope City. Facebook, YouTube, there's even a TikTok now, and Instagram. Please follow us so that we can stay connected with you. Now grab your coffee, make sure you're comfy, and let's worship together. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Sometimes we fall into the trap of, of realizing that if we want more of him, then there has to be less of us. This next song is a new song. 
that's called nothing else. And all it talks about is we just want more of him. So as, as he increases, let's remember that we decrease so that we can usher in his presence this morning. What do you guys say?
Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else. I just want you, I just want you, and nothing Come else. Come on, sing it out to him. We need more of you, God. We need more of your spirit, Jesus. Move in this place, God. That's our cry this morning. We want more of you, God. Move in this place, Jesus. And nothing else, nothing else will do. And breathe. familiar with a service like this or or a church like this so I just I just want to teach you what's happening okay we're we're in a season at a, as a church where like God has just been showing up in a big way Not that he doesn't always, but you might be new or first time and like, why are people's hands lifted or why, why is Pastor Gina, you know, worshiping on her knee? Why, why are things, ha I don't, I don't understand it. I'm not used to it. Let me tell you, that's okay. That's okay. That doesn't make you not good or not, not good enough or anything like that. All it means, guys is that God is in this place. He's in the room. And so what I'm telling you is, be okay if you worship differently than someone around you. And if they worship different than you, that's okay. But together, we're going after God. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you that your presence is in this place. Lord, we thank you 
that you're a good God. That where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is joy. There's deliverance. There's power. There's peace. That whatever we need is found in His presence. So come on, Hope City, let's just continue to worship and go after God together.
evidence is all around for the spirit of the Lord is here see a miracle a miracle can happen now for the spirit for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all God, we just thank you. And I don't want to just keep saying the same thing as I said the first service, but when we're singing songs, we're declaring praise and confessing. We're confessing to a powerful, loving, caring God. And it gets me so excited and passionate because when you sing words like the evidence is all around it's not because we got to go look far it's because it's right there in our lives now i'm so thankful and passionate that we got a great brother i have a great brother here tyler that god put on his heart to come And I came six months ago and to see the growth and the things that God is doing here. But it's not just because a lot of bodies are in here, it's because God is transforming lives. So the evidence is all around. Oh. A miracle can happen now For the Spirit of the Lord Come on, sing the evidence is all around The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord That the Spirit of the Lord is here A miracle, a miracle Spirit of the Lord See the evidence is all around The evidence is all For the Spirit of the Lord For the Spirit of the Lord Is Hey Hope City family Pastor G and I are here at the hospital And we are so excited to introduce The newest member of our family the newest member of the Hope City family, Hope City Kids, is growing again. <laughs> Meet baby Azaria. Yay. Pastor Gina is looking beautiful as always. She did amazing. And we're here. We just wanted to say we love you. We miss you. We feel so blessed. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who's prayed for us and reached out to us. It was great delivery and we're just resting up and we miss you all, love you. And I'm excited about the guest speaker today. Well, not really a guest. It's our very <laughs> own. Come on, get ready for Justine or tell. We love you, Hope City. See you soon. Good morning, Hope City at home. I am so excited to be here with you guys today and bring the word, but first, I just wanna take a minute and celebrate our pastors, Tyler and Gina, and the whole Butler family, as this week they welcomed their baby girl, Azaria, into the world. So let's show them some love in the chat and celebrate with them during this beautiful time. And that means you guys are stuck with me today. So I'm really excited to share with you what God has really put on my heart, and I think we should get going. So if you guys are ready, I want you to type in the chat and let me know you're ready and get your Bibles out. And we are going to be in John chapter 5, reading out of the NIV version. Starting at verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, 
which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colored colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak to each one of us what it is that we need to hear this morning. Don't let us leave the same way as we walked into our living room this morning. I pray that the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips will be honoring and glorifying to you. And I just pray that you will do what only you can do and the honor and the glory is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you are taking notes this morning, I want you to write down the title of my message, Do You Want to Get Well? Now, I preached a a version of this message at the Sisterhood back in October. If you were there, Sisterhood, I love you so much. Let's make some noise in the chat for our Sisterhood. We have so much fun together. Um, But I just felt like it was so um, telling and so appropriate for right now. So I've revamped it. And so I'm really excited to bring this word. I encourage you guys to be active in the chat today. Let us know you're watching. Um, if, you, if something really speaks to your spirit, type amen, clapping emojis. If you have prayer requests, type them in the chat. It's a great way for us to stay connected during this season. So this morning in my message, I want to talk a little bit about breakthrough. So I'm going to start by giving us some dictionary definitions of breakthrough so we can really get an idea of where we're going this morning. So dictionary definition of breakthrough. The first definition is an offensive military assault that penetrates behind the enemy line. Okay. The second definition is an act or an instance of moving beyond an obstacle. I like the sound of that. The third definition is a sudden advance, typically in knowledge or in technique. And the last definition is a person's first notable success. Now, all of those definitions, I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds pretty appealing. So now I want to take that and I want to translate it for us into spiritual terms. A breakthrough is when the cycle finally breaks. A breakthrough is when the giant is finally conquered. It's when you finally overcome that obstacle. It's when you understand something, when God has given you divine revelation about something, to see something in a new way, an immediate change of mindset, a new understanding that helps you to walk in freedom, sometimes even when your circumstances haven't changed. This is breakthrough. So if this is something, as I'm talking about this, and you hear and you think, man, I could use some breakthrough in my life, I want you to let me know in the chat this morning because I have good news for you. Our God, the God that we serve in the Bible, is referred to as the God of breakthrough. In 2 Samuel 5.20, we see this. It says, So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. And them is talking about the Philistines. He had just won a big battle against the Philistines. And he said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim, or the Lord who breaks, also known as the God of breakthrough. And I love that imagery. As water breaks out, I can just picture that in my mind. And that in the spiritual is what God does when we see breakthrough. It's an immediate change doing something that only God can do. And the man in our story, in our story in John today, he experienced this type of breakthrough. He spent 38 years in the same cycle, day after day after day. And in a moment, Jesus changed his entire life. And I I love this text because it teaches us things about breakthrough. 
See, the power for breakthrough is all God's. It's something only God can do. But the obedience to bring about breakthrough, that's ours. See, it's just like any blessing that we can receive in our life. Blessings require stewardship because with great blessing comes great responsibility. It's just like in Luke 12, 48, where it says, to him who much was given, much will be required. And so the same thing comes with breakthrough. When we receive the freedom that breakthrough brings, we have a responsibility now to walk in that freedom. And if we're not ready to walk in that freedom, we may find ourselves exactly where we started. And so God is smart. God knows what he's doing, and he doesn't give us things that we aren't ready for. But the thing is, we all have blind spots. We all have things that may prevent us from getting to this point of breakthrough. We all have things that may cause us not to steward our own breakthrough. We all have them, our barriers to breakthrough. And in this story, I think it shows us some of these barriers. I want to go through them today. I have six quick points that sometimes can be barriers to breakthrough, but I'm praying that these points will bring freedom to us this morning as we read through them and as God speaks to our hearts where it is that he wants to move within our lives. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready, and we're going to jump right into the points. The first point I have, number one, if you're taking notes, is process. And this comes from John 5, verse 4, and I'm going to read out of the New King James. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, I don't know where all of my observant people are this morning, but I'm sure someone has noticed that this verse was not in the original text that I read at the beginning of the message. See, when I read the message, it wasn't that I skipped over verse 4. It's that in the NIV version, there is no verse 4. And the reason why is because verse 4 is actually thought to not have been in the original transcript, the original version of the Bible, that over time it was added in. And so the, the newer versions of the Bible actually either take it out or they put it in brackets. Um, and the reason why is because this was more of a superstition of the time. The superstition was that at random times throughout history, an angel would come down to the pool and would flap its wings and it would stir the water. And whoever reached the water first would be healed of whatever their ailment was. And so that's why all of these people found themselves sitting around the, the pool, is they were waiting for their opportunity to be healed. They were following what the world told them they needed to do to be healed. It was worldly wisdom. And yet we find our man in the story who listened to the lies that the world told him, who bought in to the worldly wisdom, and yet finds himself still stuck on his mat. And I wonder how many of us this morning are in our, our cycle, are looking for our breakthrough, and yet we haven't seen it because we're choosing to follow the process the world says we need to follow, what the world says will make us happy. We're listening to the lies the world has told us, and in reality, that's not the process that will bring us breakthrough. You see, the world says you need a spouse to be happy. You need to find yourself a man and you'll be happy. The world says, if you just get more followers and Instagram likes, then you'll feel fulfilled. The world says, if they hurt you, you hurt them back. And that's how you'll feel better about it. The world says, just escape from your problem for a little bit and it'll help you feel better. The world says, you can't do things the right way and be successful. The only people that really win are the people that cheat to get to the top. But the problem with these things are these are the things that the world says will bring us breakthrough. But this man spent 38 years listening to what the world said, but he was following the wrong process. I want to tell you this morning that you might find something else that works for a season, but it will not last, it will not satisfy, and it will not bring true and lasting breakthrough. The only process that works, the only answer, always has been, always will be, is Jesus. 
He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He is the cup that overflows. Fullness of joy is found in his presence. He knows best, his word is true, and his process is the way. And if we wanna see true breakthrough, if we wanna start walking in who we are called to be, in who God has designed us in our destiny, we have to follow his process in his way and his word if we wanna see it come to pass. But sometimes it's not, it's not the process, it is the people that we are choosing to surround ourselves with. That's number two, point number two if you're taking notes is people. And that's from John 5, verse 3 in the NIV. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blame, the, excuse me, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. Another translation says it was a multitude of people that used to lie here. And for 38 years, this man found himself surrounded by people. Feels good to be around people, right? except the people that he was surrounded by were in the same rut, with the same mindset, following the same process and getting the same results, still finding themselves stuck. Sometimes it feels good not to be alone. Sometimes it feels comforting to know that other people are in the same boat and that's a good thing to an extent. But sometimes it can be dangerous because we think we're being comforted and instead we're actually being held down. See, the thing about crowds is crowds create cultures. And if you remember from your social studies class, cultures create norms. But the thing about norms is just because a culture defines something as a norm does not mean that it is normal. I think we can all agree that our culture in the United States has some norms that are not normal. And yet, if you spend long enough in these norms in this culture around this crowd, you may start to believe that what is not normal is normal. You may start to believe that dysfunction is normal. You might start to believe that it is normal to live in bondage. But if you're not careful, you will buy into the lie that because you are not alone, that you are free. But in reality, friends don't let friends stay bound. See, I want to encourage you this morning. If your friends are in the same thing that you are trying to get out of, you're not putting yourself in a position to get free. See, what friends do is friends don't let you stay on your mat by the pool. What friends do is they pick you up and they pull you up and they point you towards Jesus. See, what friends do is they recognize when a, when a friend might be struggling, when a friend is in the cycle, but what they do is they don't let them stay there. A true friend says, I know you're struggling, but I know the way, I know the person, I know the power that can bring breakthrough to your life. True friends point you back to Jesus. So maybe for some of us this morning, God is waiting for you to find a new crowd that he's waiting for you to find a crowd that has a culture with norms that point you to Jesus, with norms that don't let you stay bound, with norms that will give you the opportunity to steward your breakthrough because you, until you are ready to steward your breakthrough, you will not see it. If you are going to receive breakthrough and go exactly back to the same mat around the same people, you will find yourself in the same bondage, but God is ready for you to surround yourself with people that will help you walk in freedom. The next point I have is number three, which is posture. And we see this in John 5, verse 6. It reads, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? See, when he was lying there, he was lying on a mat. And I wonder if, if some of us aren't seeing breakthrough in our lives because we have a flawed perspective, because our posture is one that's on a mat, because we haven't positioned ourselves to see God moving. You see, I fear that for some of us, our faith has taken a hit, and we find ourselves paralyzed by pain, and we find ourselves beaten down by life circumstances. 
and we find ourselves on our mat in a posture of defeat. But the problem with this posture is that God could be moving right next to me, but because I haven't positioned myself properly, I won't see what it is that he is trying to do. You see, when you find yourself in this posture, it's because your posture is being determined by your circumstance. But you see, confidence affects posture. Have you ever noticed someone that is super confident and it affects how they carry themselves? They walk a little bit taller. Maybe they put their shoulders back because they have confidence. And I'm afraid that some of us have let our confidence be in our circumstances and it's affected our posture. When in reality, our confidence is not in our circumstances. Our confidence is in the word of God. It is in who God is and who he says we are. You see, God says that you are called, that you are chosen, that you are anointed, that you are loved, that you are forgiven, that you are a royal priesthood, that you are a joint heir with Christ. And it's funny how when you start to stand on the confidence of what God's word says, how your posture changes, how you position yourself differently, how I can see things that I wasn't able to see before, how I can see where God is moving. Maybe God has been waiting to do a breakthrough in your life and you haven't been able to see it because your posture is one of defeat when it should be one of confidence. God loves you and your confidence is found in that truth and that truth alone. But I want to keep moving on because sometimes it's not our posture and it's not the people we're spending our time with, but it's, it's our person. It's coming from the inside. And when I say person, I mean identity. See, this man in the story, he was, he was a sick man. He was referred to as an invalid. In fact, in the story, we never even hear his name. He spent so long on the mat. He spent so long in his condition that that became his identity. That was what he was referred to as, was a sick man, an invalid. The irony is that in John 5 verse 9 in the NLT version, the mat is referred to as a sleeping mat. See, the mat was never meant to be his permanent location. The mat was meant to house him while he slept and then to be picked back up. But yet, because he started to put too much weight on his mat, it started to become his identity and not his temporary place that he stayed. See, the mat was never meant to carry his weight day in and day out. And I'm wondering how many of us God is telling us to pick up your mat. And yet we can't pick it up because we've been putting so much weight on it that it is our identity. And so God is waiting for us to pick up our mat and we can't do it because our entire weight of who we are is resting on our mat, is resting on some circumstances, resting on a problem. And that's not how God intended it to be. See, let me break it down for you. You may have made a mistake five years ago that you can't seem to forgive yourself for and you've asked for forgiveness time and time again, and year after year you keep putting more and more weight on this mat, and now it has become who you are. It has kept you stuck in your life because you can't seem to see yourself outside of this identity, and God is waiting for you to say, no, honey, you need to pick that up and carry it as a testimony. It was not meant to keep you stuck, it was a mistake that I redeemed you out of, but now you get to carry it with you and you get to tell other people about it and show other people, yep, I used to be on that mat, but look what God did. But that replies to more people than, than just the person I'm speaking about. I think we find our identity in our career. We find our identity in being a spouse or a parent or an athlete. And we start to put so much weight on those identities that we find ourselves stuck because we're starting to identify ourselves as things that were never meant to carry our weight. See, all of those things I mentioned, we're supposed to carry those too. The only thing that was meant to carry the weight of your identity is being a follower of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the only person that will never let us down, that will never fail. Our identity and other things, our careers may fail, people may fail us, 
injuries, whatever it may be, may fail us, but Jesus will never fail. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if we want a solid identity, the only thing that can carry our weight is our identity in him. Everything else, we're meant to carry with us. It doesn't mean that we reject those things. It doesn't mean that we don't show those things to other people. It means that they're not holding our weight. We're carrying them. The mistake that we made is not defined who we are. It's a part of our testimony that we are carrying and can now show other people what God has done in our life. But maybe, maybe it's not your identity. Maybe for you, it's your comfortability. Or number five, plenty. I want to read John 5, verse 6 again. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? When he saw him lying there for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? See, I think some, some of us have become so comfortable in our own dysfunction, in our own circumstances, in our own self-sufficiency. That Jesus sees how long we've been trying to do it this way and he goes, do you want to be made well? Do you want to change? Seems like a silly question. You would think someone that spent 38 years on a mat would want to be well, would want to be healed. And yet Jesus took the time to ask him this question. And I think it should be a reflection point for us do I want to be healed or am I too comfortable in my own circumstance, in my own cycle, that I'm actually terrified to walk in freedom? I'm afraid to be outside of my comfort zone. I'm afraid to carry the responsibility of being free. I'm afraid because this is all that I know. And yet we have to trust that when God comes in and, and he wants to break us free from this cycle, that, that it is going to be better than anything we can ask, think, or imagine, that he is gonna work things out for our good, that it may be uncomfortable, but that it is going to be good for us in the end. And I wonder if others of us sincerely desire a breakthrough, but we've spent so long seeking the process of the world and so long surrounded by, by people that have the same mindset that we do, and so long we've found our identity in other things besides God, that we want the healing, but we don't want to be whole. We don't want to be made well. See, you can get a physical healing. The man could have been physically healed, but he could have not been well on the inside. You see, the breakthrough wasn't just about his physical healing. It was about his inward healing. It was about transforming him from the inside out, changing the way he thinks, changing the way he sees himself in the lens of scripture and how God sees him. It's not just about him getting physically free because he could be physically free and end up back at the same mat in front of the same pool. And I wonder if there's any of us this morning that we have been asking God to be healed and God wants to make us well. That we've been asking for, for the outward thing, the outward circumstance to be gone and we want God to transform our circumstance and for a breakthrough and for things to change immediately. And what God's trying to do is to change us. What God wants to do is he wants to change our heart. He wants to transform us from the inside out. So I want to ask you this morning, do you want to be healed or do you want to be made well? And I love that Jesus is always so patient that in point number six, our pretext or excuses, as we see in John 5 verse 7. And the verse says, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Jesus says to him, do you want to be made well? And he said, every time I try and get to the pool, someone beats me there. That was his response to Jesus. Wouldn't you think that he would say, yes, yes, I want to be, I want to be healed. I want to be made well. But his response to Jesus was an excuse. And I wonder how many of us when, when God is ready to do something in our lives, the reason why we're not seeing it come to pass is because of our excuses. 
our excuses that we're not ready, that we're not good enough, that we don't have what we need to make it happen, excuse after excuse. And Jesus says, I'm not worried about those things. In fact, what Jesus says to the man, he doesn't even address his excuse. What he does is he gives him the answer. He gives him the antidote. What he says to him is, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. He says, get up, which means change your posture. You need to start walking a little bit different. You need to start seeing yourself the way that I do, standing on the promises and what the word of God says about you. Change your posture, get up. Number two, pick up your mat. It's time to stop putting the full weight of your identity on your mat and it's time you start carrying it as a testimony. And three, walk. It's time you get out of the cycle, that you actively walk away from the process, from the people, from the things that are keeping you in the cycle that you are in. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. So Hope City at home this morning, I want to say to you, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. I don't know where it is in your life that you need to see breakthrough, but I know that God wants to take you to a new level of relationship with Him. He wants to mold you more into the person that He made you to be. He wants you to break things off of your life that are preventing you from being all that you are called to be. So Hope City at home, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. So I wanna, I wanna pray for us this morning. I wanna pray for us that we can truly examine ourselves, that the Holy Spirit can speak to us and show us where are our blind spots? What are things that are preventing us from walking in the breakthrough that God wants to bring? What are the things that are holding us back from being all that God has called us to be? So if you're in your living room, wherever it is you find yourself this morning, I'm just going to ask that you close your eyes as we pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's watching this message. I pray that for every single one of us, that Holy Spirit, you will speak to us. You will reveal to us where it is you want to work on our hearts, where our blind spots are, where our barriers to breakthrough may be. I pray that you will reveal them, that you will expose them, that you will help us to walk in the freedom that you desire for us so that we can be closer in relationship with you and be all that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to take one more minute to speak to another group of people because all of these things that we've talked about today are not just barriers to breakthrough for the believer. They're barriers to a relationship with Jesus. You may find yourself in a posture of defeat so beaten down by life that you could never imagine that a God could love someone like you. You may find yourself surrounded with people that, that are keeping you in the same cycle, that are keeping you from pursuing a relationship with Jesus. You may find yourself in the comfortability of life. You may find yourself placing your identity in things that are just not quite holding the weight. You might find yourself giving excuse after excuse, well, maybe next year or maybe next Sunday. But I want to tell you that Jesus wants a relationship with you. That there is a God who gave his only son, who died on a cross to pay for all of your sins, so that if you repent and accept the free gift that he has given you, that you can have a relationship with him that you can be confident in where you will spend eternity. So if that is you this morning and you're like, I'm ready to overcome those barriers today. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want to take a second and pray for you. So as I'm praying, I want you to repeat after me. And this isn't some magical prayer, but the Bible does say that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. So I'm going to pray and I just ask that you repeat after me, that you would make it personal between you and God, and that this would be the, the first day of a brand new start for you. Dear Jesus, I thank you for everything you're doing in my life. I thank you for the cross, for dying for my sins, and I accept the free gift of salvation today. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and I believe that God raised you from the dead. 
thank you for this free gift and allow me to walk in relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give it up for all of the people that have given their life to Jesus this morning. As the Bible says that heaven is celebrating on earth, we are throwing a party too in the chat. So I want to encourage you, if this is your first time today, please fill out the connect card that you will find in the description of this video. We want to stay connected with you. And if you want to sign up for anything next steps wise, baptisms, connect groups, if you are on fire and you're ready to take some of the next steps, you can do that through the connect card as well. So I thank you so much for your time this morning. I love you, Hope City at Home, and we'll see you again soon.